Thank you very much for uh, the nice, very nice uh, introduction. And um, as been said, I will be today introducing the um, our big data science center at the Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility, which is uh, part of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, particularly, I will be introducing the um, how we deployed the uh, first super facility in China. Um, here I am the director of the Big Data Science Center, which from now on I'll call it uh, BDSC, and um, at the Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility, which from now on I will call SSRF. First of all, a bit of geography. So the um, Big Data Science Center, it's located in Shanghai here. And if you zoom in in Shanghai, uh, we are particularly in the Pudong district. And you can see it's extra vizier, about something like 20 kilometers from the Shanghai International Airport and very close to the city center. If you further zoom in, uh, you end up to see here, this is the um, uh, Shanghai Synchro Radiation Facility uh, scientific campus, where actually you see the accelerator ring, this is the synchrotron itself, and here you see instead the soft X-ray free electron laser. And uh, you can see here is located our big data science center. So just a very brief introduction at the hour. Here in, uh, in the Shanghai, there is an initiative, particularly in the Pudong district, and particularly in the Zhenzhen area, to develop a very innovative campus dedicated to scientific research. And it will be made of the um, SSRF, of course, so our synchrotron, but it's in development, the hard X-ray free electron laser, as well as in the future will be developed the four generation synchrotron, which is a coherent diffraction limited synchrotron. So it's going to be deployed a very extensive uh, array of large facility, which will serve the world science in uh, China. Particularly, let's zoom in a bit in the uh, what our SSRF, our synchrotron, is what is doing and what we at the BDSC are doing for SSRF. So SSRF is a large national synchrotron facility, and um, you can see here we are marked all our beam lines, of which 30 now are in operation. For non-expert beam lines are actually research station, which are all connected to the accelerator ring. And this, at this research station, actually, users which are who are academic users, industrial users, or um, institutional governative users, they all converge from all over China, all over the nation. Here in uh, Shanghai, as this is the only synchrotron in China, and uh, here they can do any kind of, of better, the only third generation synchrotron in China as here they can do all the kinds of uh, research. So we actually are really multidisciplinary. As you can see from here, we actually cover any kind of um, science, which is not only limited to material science, physics, chemistry, so the art core science, we extend to medical science, bioscience, even archeology, span and uh, energy science, nuclear magnetic science. So we really cover practically all the discipline of science. So um, at the BDSC, our Big Data Science Center, what we do is we take care of the world data science. So all the data generated in the uh, our SSRF are then analyzed and interpreted and made available to our user through the BDSC, which takes care of the data science and scientific computation at the SSRF. So as a surf represents a, um, a large facility where multidisciplinarity and multimodal science and technology are at large scale. So what's the problem here? You will see with a lot of beam lines. So a lot of beam lines mean also that we produce a huge amount of data. The issue, which is not only SSRF issue, is the big data delusion. Uh, so many beamlines produce big data, and we have estimated that soon we will reach 30 petabytes per year, and these are only raw scientific data. Once they got processed, they extend to 100 petabytes per year. 
and um, all this data, there is no possibility for human resource to analyze them. There is no big enough department, not big enough university, which all together joint human resource can analyze all this data. This is an international issue. It's been estimated that internationally, 60% of all the data from all over the large facility worldwide are analyzed and only 40 and uh, sorry, and 40% of them are totally wasted. So 40% of the international data from all the large facility are not analyzed. The experiments are done, but the data are not analyzed. This is a huge waste. This is a huge pity. Uh, let's imagine how many discoveries, scientific discovery, and this technological advancement are hidden in this 40% of data, it's a humongous amount. We are losing over here. That's exactly the objective of our Big Data Science Center. Our aim is to make sure that 100% of all these data are analyzed and are ending and landing in scientific publication. So uh, all the big data at the uh, synchrotron must be properly fully processed. So not simply archived and forgotten. That's why there is the rise here of Big Data Center, and in future we will may witness the declining of the simple data archives. This means that when we, if we achieve our objective, we will obtain a dramatic increase in scientific discoveries and technological advancement, allowing all the users to analyze all their data. How we do that? So this is, let me, present you the final solution we have deployed. And then I will go backward in history to show up how we reach this point. So this is the Big Data Science Center solution at SSRF for the Big Data Deluge. So we develop a Big Data Framework. And what exactly it is, it's a machine-readable data pipelines targeted at enhancing and augmenting large scientific facility with artificial intelligence, AI, and robotic automation. So practically, we aim, our aim is to create robotic beamlines. So beamlines which can run uh, as much as possible without human intervention, without beamline scientists and without user as a scientist intervention. So how this is possible to make, actually this means that our robotic system, the beamlines, must be guided by artificial intelligence. Now, there is a huge hype today about artificial intelligence, but there is a big question behind it. How you can train a machine in artificial intelligence if the machine cannot properly read the data? That's our major issue. Now, there are many international um, academic organization and large facility are very much focused on artificial intelligence, but the very problem we are facing at large facilities is that we have a huge amount of unrelated data source. In fact, the data are not coming only from beamlines, from the experiments, are coming from control systems, are coming from the user themselves, all their, the data concerning the user, are coming from their publication, all the information concerning their publication, what they've done with their data to reach that publication, are coming from interfaces, a web portal, so the way users interact with the large facility, are coming, of course, least but not, uh, last of all, but not least, are coming from the uh, analysis application, input and output parameter use. All these data are unrelated to each other and then not properly readable by artificial intelligence, so are not useful for machine learning purpose. Therefore, at the BDSC, we have developed a backbone, a big data framework. It's a bit like a spine, you can see of the system. So this backbone, it's actually tagging and labeling all the unrelated, all the data coming from the unrelated source, like you see here, like a bit like a nervous systems. Tag all of that, and once it tagged them with metadata, it made it readable for artificial intelligence, because when they tag, it, cr it creates a unified universal big data uniform formatting system. And this, this means that all these information are made readable for artificial intelligence, for machine learning, and this means artificial intelligence training. Once this is achieved, actually artificial intelligence can send, back, can send feedback to robotic automation at the beamlines directly. And so it can guide the robotic automation 
uh, we can guide the robotic automation at beamlines through artificial intelligence, which has been trained out of all the information from the experiments, from the users, and all the data that we are connected to. So that's our uh, achievement. That's the way we have deployed then, this big data framework here. Let's see a bit backward how you achieve this. So first of all, when we started here at the Big Data Science Center, the situation at SSRF is that the data, uh, the majority of the data set were disordered and not centralized. So the first step we need to do, uh, we did, is to centralize, order, and tag all the data sets that converge into our system from all over the SSRF. This is a necessary basis for artificial intelligence at a large facility. If once we've achieved this, we've increased the number of scientific publications produced at SSRF uh, through big data science, artificial intelligence, or robotic automation. Once we've done this, then what we've achieved, we have user bringing home now scientific publication ready results, not simply raw data, which take months to be analyzed. So we dramatically accelerated the user scientific discovery and, techno and therefore we push forward technological advancement. In order to do that, what we've done, uh, we've deployed a super facility. What is a super facility is a virtual facility. It's uh, a virtual facility is made of many components as you can see here, but the most important thing is it's centered around user science, not data science, user science. We want the, that the user leverage our state-of-the-art scientific computation in order to focus only on his science and increase his scientific uh, productivity rather than analyze data one after the other, spend months on simple data analysis that machine could do. So in order to achieve that, we create this super facility circle. So you start an experiment done at the beam lines at the synchrotron like SSRF, which produce big data. These are, of course, going through theory, algorithm, and modeling to be interpreted. But this, this is running on top of HPC clusters, which we have here at the, the BDSC. And if it's not sufficient, we have developed a, a supercomputing interface. So our system, when such a radio resource, um, elastically scale out to national supercomputer here in China. And uh, all of this is possible through big data network and uh, national wide. But all these components are fantastic state of the art data science and scientific computation combined together. But all will be useless if we are unable to provide all of this in a transparent manner to the user. To do that, we have developed a software platform. Software platform leverage all this our circle here and provide to the user in a transparent way with a very user-friendly interface. Once the user can interact with all this uh, capability uh, in a simple way without any kind of expertise, he can achieve at the beam line real-time data interpretation. So he can in real time, meanwhile, it's doing experiment at the beam lines, see what is going on with these measurements. This means you can optimize in real time the experiment, better it, improve it, and this means that it can increase dramatically the number of publications coming out from his research and therefore his scientific productivity. How to do this? So in order to do that, we have automatized the whole facility data life cycle. And when I say the whole facility data life cycle, I mean from all of it, not just the beam time, from the proposal to the publication. Um, particularly each step that you see here for this uh, facility life cycle got collected within a metadata catalog that we have uh, developed and deployed here at uh, with the cooperation of the um, European Union facility um, and system like SciCAD, for example, that we have adapted and uh, redesigned and improved in order to collect all the metadata, all the information to track all of them from all the steps that you can see here. Proposal, we check all the information, our system will collect all the information in the proposal that the user sent on the review process of the proposal, on the scheduling of the beam time, and then on the effective beam time. So we'll track experiment, 
all the raw data coming out from it. And of course, we we'll track all the information input output parameter for data analysis interpretation. And of course, we'll track everything. Our, all of this is ending up in a publication. This will be fundamental because we feed all this information to artificial intelligence through machine learning and neural networks to train artificial intelligence in order to optimize this kind of process as much as possible automatically for our user. We've packaged all of these in a super facility platform, which we call Artificial Intelligence SSRF Super Facility Platform, AI SSRF SP, which is a next generation big data scientific platform and the one of the first ever fully integrated artificial intelligence big data infrastructure for large facility worldwide. Particularly, our platform focuses on these two points, the beam times and the, the uh, data analysis, because it's here where the science actually is, um, push for advancing technology because it's here where actually data science becomes science. So that's why we are very much focused. We are advocating, advocating a lot for the creation of a national scientific ID, which is very important because the first information we need to tag on our data is the ID of our user who actually is operating the whole process. But the national ID is a bit more than simply an ID they log in in SSRF system. We are planning it in order to make it possible to use one single ID for all the large facility in China. Synchrotron facility, neutron facility, X-ray free electron laser facility. One ID will collect all the data and on this data are converging all in our super facility platform. This means, I will show you in a moment what exactly this means and how, and what, how important is really is this. Now, step further, how exactly I, we at the BDSC have planned these things. I have devised uh, the um, uh, design architecture and deployment of this of the uh, AI SSRF SP, dividing it in three different modules. The first one, the very core, is the big data framework, which I uh, already presented you before. And this is the, the very core of our system, fully operational and deployed. Now we are putting in front of it an interface, a unified user interface and management system, which will allow the user to interact directly with this big data framework, leveraging the full power of it, and uh, allow the user, therefore, to uh, make use of the big data to train the third model, which is artificial intelligence for the final automation at the beam lines. So this is the three model we are focused. The, uh, the interface is very important as actually user don't actually user as available big data uh, science uh, capability here at, at our BDSC at SREF, but they don't know how to use it. So. In order to use it properly, our AI interface will help them to transparently use HPC, so high performance computing and AI, to accelerate their science at the beam lines. And we will deploy different kinds of machine learning methods in order to analyze all the kind of multidisciplinary science they will bring here. I told you already that our synchrotron is a very multidisciplinary, so we need different artificial intelligence approach here. The most important thing is that this platform is not be developed only for synchrotron, but is it as a general interface which can be adapted to many other large facilities now, neutron, X-ray free electron laser, which you just plug in in our facility in our uh, super facility platform. Once you do that, you achieve a very important thing. We have created a large scale multimodal system. So practically a user can use its national ID, so it's login to login in this platform, and then it get the data from all over the all over the facility. And then through our super facility platform, it can uh, do a combined analysis. So this means that you get in from each large facility, you must know produce very particular kind of information which are not to be found in the others. So if you combine all the facility together, you can get a complete and extensive comprehension of your science. That's exactly what we are providing. And that's the very core. Now for people who are not really experienced in what is the metadata, since I've talked about a lot about metadata, let me give you a very quick example to you. If you consider a normal conventional search engine, the one you use, and that can be Baidu or can be Google. So I think you never do something like, you never, you want to search something. Do you ever write something like 45 gram of fat, carbohydrates, proteins, cholesterol, potassium, iron, 
collagen infrastructure, in, uh, infrastructure content ratio between protein degradation, vapor evaporation, fiber calling, fat saturation, geolocalization coordinate, five kilometer around uh, this geolocalization building with food facility, a uh, food licensing, aggregate corresponding complaint and comments forms from user, access list of products sold, determine the composition of each product, filter with previous search parameter. Have you ever written this stuff inside a search bar? I never done it. You know why? Because you know what I wrote it here. I wrote best near restaurant with well cooked tea bone meat. So you see, these are the metadata which the machine understand very well. These are instead the way human write and the way human reach. So what we do at BDSC, we make human write this and machine read this. So we join, we create a human machine interface. In fact, you can see very well this metadata correspond to meat. This metadata correspond to T-bone. This metadata correspond to well cooked. This metadata correspond to near. This metadata correspond to best restaurant. This metadata in the end correspond with you clicking search. So this is what you get. This is what you want. The problem is that internationally at the moment, our users are forced to write metadata, to read metadata, not to write human readable sentences. So this is exactly what we are doing. In order to move from here, so use, user cannot operate if not with metadata, to write human sentences that machine can understand and can react to you, you deploy our AI SSRFSP, which join metadata with data indeed. We train our platform, so you already understand, uh, already know now that there is a, um, our platform is made of two different databases, one for the metadata collection and one for the raw data collection. They are linked. The metadata are used for tagging the raw data. So we label the raw data with the metadata we collect. So let's see, the national scientific ID, the ID of our user goes in the metadata. And if write a proposal in this proposal, the user by proposal ID, experimental topic, experimental requirements, list of samples, with codes. This, all of these, we are making now a system where AI is reading the proposal and tagging all the keywords to suggest in future Beamline is set up to less experienced user. All this information here are going to metadata. Why it's important? Because in the future, you're going to have a system like this one you see here, where actually, uh, typically, when you write a proposal, you must be a super expert at the moment. That's the present. So you need to know exactly your sample. If you want to get very good data out of it, which kind of technique you need to use, which kind of beam lines you need to use, which kind of facility you need to use. With the future of our system, you don't need to know that. You don't need to be a, an expert to write a proposal. You just write, I want to study a bone. And that this nanometer resolution and our system automatically will select the best facility where to do that, will select the best technique where to use it, and uh, the best beam time where to do that, and will fill up the proposal for you with this information. Simplify the user life as much as possible. Then the user move to the synchrotron. When you do the measurements, actually what's happened, you produce big data and this goes, these are big raw data, which go in the raw database, but these are all tagged with the parameters for beamline setup, alignment and calibration, and parameter for simulation and modeling. So these one are produced by the beamline scientists where they prepare the setup of the beamline, and these are produced by the user when they do the data analysis, simulation, or modeling. So all of these actually are used as a tag, and the AI is learning the beamline and measurements configuration from expert user, and in future, after learn, we suggest them to less experienced user to optimize their experiment. So the user will focus more on science. The beamline's responsible will focus more on the optimization of the beamlines, rather than both of them focusing very much on configuration and simple data analysis. All of this will converge, we produce raw data and metadata, as you see, and these are all sent to our BDSC and they're processed with support of uh, national supercomputer centers. The final results then are displayed on team uh, client terminal in a quasi real time fashion with a very user friendly interface. All of this will converge in a universal format. We use JSON for the metadata where we collect all the metadata inside here. Uh, this is not just simple a project, this is something working now. So we have deployed these things at the SSRF and it's working. You are seeing now one of our beam lines. This is a, a robotic 
um, automation at the big minds, which is actually doing the experiment for our user. And these, would we want you to do the experiment, raw data are produced. This is raw data used to the detector. These are unreadable by human. Then our system will use um, a, a application running on our APG, a, a, HPC clusters in order to produce the final uh, nice visual 3D result that you want to publish on your article. When the artificial intelligence would be fully trained here at the SSRF, uh, we will close the circle. We won't move just like this. We will do also back here. In fact, your data may be not that nice. And if it's not that nice, they don't, are not very meaningful in terms of physics. So uh, if this happens, the artificial intelligence can judge this and automatically readjust the whole experiment to optimize them in real time, meanwhile you are measuring there. So if the physics is wrong, if the result is not nice to see, the artificial intelligence can evaluate it in real time in few seconds and adjust in real time beam one experiment configuration. So the past you leave behind you is that you find that you uh, that your experiment was wrongly configured only when you are at home after month. It's too late. You cannot do anything anymore then. You just have bad data and it will be better next year. With the future we're doing here at the BDSC, big data analysis, is reconfiguring your experiment directly during BIM time. So you bring on only good data for your publication. Uh, in detail how this thing is done, let me tell you how we deploy real-time big data analysis, automation, artificial intelligence. So you see, uh, we have first of all BIM lines with robotics automation. Now in future, we'll be equipping this BIM line with Internet of Things, IoT sensors. And all of that will converge in a uniform SSRF user portal interface, which will interact with our user. So they produce here, uh, robotic beam lines produce big data, and the big data produce raw data here. So um, the first things will happen is that they will be, uh, this raw data will be evaluated by age cluster. And age cluster is actually acting like a fog filtering. Uh, as opposite to cloud. So this actually what it's doing is selecting the raw data, which are the good one, which are the bad one, and only the bad one will be sent then to our BDSC HPC cloud, where actually will be actually will be fully analyzed. So in the, at the beam line, what we have installed, we are going to install now this age cluster, the uh, raw data um, get acquired, and then we have real-time calibration, data reduction, visualization, and AI training happening. Particularly, we are going to provide now a user with an interface when some expert user just from the raw data here can tell you if it's good or not to the sample. So we provide them with a like and dislike buttons here on the interface. Anytime they click like on dislike, this information are stored with our universal format JSON and fed to the machine learning. So machine is learning which are good sample, which are bad sample. And whatever is good is sent to our BDSC and here happen real time analysis, simulation, modeling, reconstruction, and visualization. And this means that again, this can be not that optimal, even if the raw data seems to look nice, the final data may be not that nice. Again, we give offer to the to the uh, user at the beam lines. All of this is happening at the beam lines, I repeat, in real time, not at home. So, and we offer the user beam lines to click again, I like and dislike, and, the, and then again, got this information got stored for machine learning or artificial intelligence. Uh, every time you dislike something, the word circle got repeated here. So the beam line got re-optimized, reconfigured, and again, you get data analysis going on till you are not happy with it. When you are happy with it, our artificial intelligence learn what is a bad configuration and what is a good configuration. I will propose it very quickly, autonomously and unmanaged, so without any human intervention, next time to non-experienced user. Now, to complete this kind of circle, we will connect uh, the big data center with our control system. The big data center's interface is already now with supercomputer, and in uh, our Big data center is a scientific cloud where actually HPC application are running for the user. Now, the last step will be for us to connect it to the control room. If we do that, this means artificial intelligence can take control directly of the robotics. And you even don't need to inform BIMLINE scientists how to reconfigure the, the BIMLINE. The artificial intelligence will do it by itself. That's as a work in progress. So, Ideally, this is the uh, this is a general architecture, this is a general model that typically you want to refer to. This is what we have done. So uh, we actually are, are robotizing now 
uh, and automating, uh, automating uh, slowly all the beam lines one after the other. In future, we will equip all of them with uh, IoT sensor, and then all of them will produce metadata and experiment big data, which will be filtered by the fog filtering system at the at age uh, cluster, the beam lines, and this after that will be all the data will be fed. Uh, only the, the here will happen the evaluation whether they are good, raw data are good or not, and then the, only the good one will be analyzed in our scientific cloud at BDSC. You see more in detail the data flow here at the, uh, the beam line, for example, now it's interact with our uh, big data center. So uh, you see that actually um, I mark with A, B, I label with A, B, and C what's happening there, beam line, A, what's happened at the H cluster, the beam line, B, what's happened the BDSC cloud at the, with C. And you can see that the first very spot is here at the detector of beam line, which produce raw data and metadata. This goes in the H cluster cache system, which actually then synchronize, so it goes here, and then synchronize this data with the, our scientific cloud at the BDSC. Now, at the age cluster, also what's happening is that we do only fly calibration and processing and the real time assessment of the data. So the user can see a preview of their raw data and they can click, I like this, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this. Whatever they like are sent then to our BDSC cloud and uh, for um, where HPC application are running to data analysis, to do data analysis, modeling, simulation, and fitting. And then in the end, all you see that both the age cluster and uh, HPC cluster are equipped with neural networks. And these are actually will be used uh, in future for uh, feedback robotic automation at the beam lines and achieve a full automated uh, robotic syndrome from beam lines through artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is exactly what we are doing at BDS CTSF. We are creating a fully automated intelligence big data solution tailored for large facility which is a unique top world-class large facility, big data robotic intelligent platform, uh, perfecting the international state of the art. And this is with, uh, therefore we are deploying artificial intelligence search engine, both locally and remotely, so that the user, as I explained to you before, now for science, can, so far they can just search in their logbook after the, the experiment, search their folder, their directory, it takes ages to find the data they're interested, very difficult, particularly after months. With our AI search engine, they after they finish the experiment, they just write after a while uh, when they're back at their own institution. Last experiment with best energy material. AI search engine is connected to all our big data framework. It will respond to you, providing exactly the uh, picture which corresponds to the last experiment with best energy material. For our core scientists, we don't provide only a black box. From here, you click and you get also the raw data which generate this picture by even four. You click and then it tells you also in your logbook where you go to find exactly that sample which generates this raw data which generates this picture. So our neural network uh, is uh, here with, uh, with the help of the most experienced academic user. We are training the, our neural network like a young inexperienced PhD student. The difference is that PhD student and postdoc after they got experience, they leave our system will stay there forever. And moreover, your knowledge is not only your like this, it will get really fairly spread to all the user, particularly the inexperienced one, thanks to our super facility, AI SSRF super facility platform. Last but not least, we connect everything with the publication of our user to demonstrate their productivity and the productivity of our facility and system. So you can see here, we can detect uh, actually, the user will produce some publication. This got detected by the data side systems, and our AI SSRF SP connect to the data side and collect this information. But even more, we can link this publication to the national scientific data of our user. Therefore, we get actually exactly which kind of data produce that publication, and we know how then uh, the good user produce good publication using which data and which parameter, and we train artificial intelligence in order to optimize for all the other users the same protocols. Uh, we are deploying here also data sharing and data policies and um, uh, using the uh, international FAIR principles. 
So the big data science center here is the next generation high performance cloud super complete platform aimed to accelerate scientific discovery and technological advancement, linking together experiment beam lines with metadata database augmented with artificial intelligence, with high performance supercomputing, providing a remote or local analysis service for academic user, industry user, uh, and all the other researchers with our large scientific campus. All of this will converge and team client application of web portal. And you can have a look here about the uh, in our interface and uh, for that we are presenting to the user. This actually is when you, uh, for the first access to our BDSC platform. And this is used for us for the uh, BDSC as a universal web portal and application portal and user management system accessing all the AI SSRFSP functionalities. Uh, here you can check the status updates, news and progress reporting. You can send feedback to us. And of course, you use it to boost international visibility and we allow remote access uh, to the user. We also allow them to download application and tools and uh, we allow the user to log in into our system and in order to use to process their data on our BDSC HPC nodes. And also we allow them a new functionality where it's in development, this one, to upload their own application and we convert them in HPC application because the majority of scientific applications are not optimized to use HPC. We do indeed this job for them. And, uh, and then after optimize it, we share to the international scientific community uh, the new HPC converted application. If the user click here, user login, it will be presented with a personal user page uh, using big data visualization. So you can see here, years of data are displayed in just one single, uh, one, just a few, uh, one single page with a few diagrams. And uh, you, can, you can access proposal, all the data, so it's a data set, all the experiment, all the publication achievement he has done with all the data. We can also uh, uh, access the calendar of, the, of his beam time, uh, past, present, and future. Here you can see, you can see all the jobs submitted to our HPC nodes, uh, applications and here you can also access and interact with us with some messaging and so on. Now even more inside the same uh, platform it can activate uh, HPC application. This means that we here have as all the data that he has collected so far. He click on his data and after he click on his data he can click on the HPC application that process that data and then you get directly the results as much as possible in real time. All is happening in one single interface in one single platform, which is the one that we provide. So let me quickly uh, go to the conclusion. Um, so what's happened after the BDSC was deployed at SSRF? You can see this is a sketch of our BDSC control room. And um, what's happened here is that we achieved the real time results. So on average, results from large scale beamline experiment from our user are delivering in about 10 minutes. We are fully operative 24 seven with user. And BDSC dramatically has accelerated user scientific productivity at SSREP of a factor of five. All of this resulted in an invitation uh, to publish an article by the IOP Publishing for the focus collection of machine learning for large scale facility, a machine learning science and technology journal, which has been accepted now for publication and is in press. Uh, here you can see that actually we are not really constrained to one single discipline. We are really multidisciplinary. So these are already all the beam lengths which are completely covered by our BDSC platform and uh, that are connected therefore to our scientific cloud as well as to supercomputer facility through our big data framework. And once more, it's very helpful even for beamline scientists all of this because they don't know how to optimize their data pipeline in order to leverage our BDSC big data framework and HPC capability. This is exactly what we do for them in order to optimize their data pipelines. I, I will skip this for simplicity. This is just the uh, overlook of our big data science center resource. Uh, let me just tell you very quickly that the BDS management operation, how we work here. So I am in charge of BDSC general strategy and I have divided in three different group. My center, we have an uh, interface group here, which is in charge of, of interfacing with beamline scientists and users and to, the, to, uh, to collect beamline data pipeline specification. They are in charge of understanding the user scientific needs. Then after they understand, they move this to the second group, which is our 
super facility AI super facility platform big data integration group which out of this understanding tailor a big data science solution for each user and after they move it to the tour group which is the AI HPC group which is in charge of interfacing big data platform with HPC cluster managing the HPC cluster and apply the AI to big data platform user and beamline operation so they tailor this solution and this solution here in this group get optimized and integrate for HPC and AI acceleration I will um, just move quickly to the outlook, skipping a bit all this detail. I want just to tell you that we are also uh, here aiming at the BDSC at SSRF to educate the next generation of international competitive scientists and users in China or scientific computational large facility developing advanced training center at the large facility. And uh, my final, final slide is the outlook for the future. We will be centralizing more and more big data from the entire SSRF. All the beamlines will be entering inside the uh, big, our big data framework umbrella, and this will converge in a JSON format and then for neural network training. And you can see that what we aim is to provide uh, auto robotic automation in order to help synchrotron which will have more and more beamlines and less and less human resource available so we can come to support to uh, with robotic automation a standing platform our platform to uh, other beamlines planned and phase two in development beamlines is our aim and also for future we will augment also further the on-site user data interpretation automation with this will means that also we will do a large scale ai training on user experiment and beamlines and we will devise facility-wide user data policy to create an AI training database. Further, we will enhance user-friendly and the friendliness of the, our AI interface. And uh, last but not least, we will be equipping all the beamlines with sensor for robotics. Thank you very much for your attention.